Hello everyone. We are preparing for our prelims examination, which is supposed to be in the month of May. I do agree we are in very difficult times of this pandemic. Whenever we face such kind of conditions, which is quite unprecedented and is unlikely that we have ever experienced it in our life. But it is important for us to remind ourselves, staying at home, studying, uncertainty in regards to what will happen in the likely future will be applicable to all of us. All of us who are preparing for this examination will be facing this particular challenge precisely as a common thing. So my advice to you is very clear and sincere. Staying at home and preparing, keeping us safe is the few things that we can certainly work towards. You must train your brain and you must remind yourself time and again that only thing that is there in my hand is to be calm, poised and continuously preparing for the examination which is coming, which is right there at the corner. Because any change in the policy, any change in the examination date, which is likely to happen, we are not speculating though, will be for all of us. So there is no point worrying about it. There is no point speculating and becoming tensed about it. The best thing that you can do is be safe and continue to prepare. And I surely want to continue with my helping hand for your revision. And if for some of us, understanding of some of the important and difficult topics of our syllabus. Slowly, steadily, we want to cover all the basics of NCRT with the support of these videos. So before I start with our climate-based chapter from NCRT, it is atmospheric pressure and atmospheric circulation. I certainly want all of us to take an optimistic viewpoint as we proceed with our study. Hum honge kamyab. Not thus in this particular pandemic case, but also in the upcoming prelims examination. So let us get going with our chapter next in the study of NCRT 11th standard, namely atmospheric pressure and wind. We are picking up chapter number 10 from physical geography, atmospheric circulation and weather system. As I said, we will be essentially talking about winds in this particular video. We will not be talking about the weather mechanism in details because that will create a lot of confusion altogether. I will be making the things much more evident in due course of time. Now if I have to make understanding with what is atmospheric circulation and how do I correlate it with air pressure. I want to read it from our NCRT. The atmospheric pressure, the weight of column of air contained in a unit area from the mean sea level to the top of the atmosphere is called atmospheric pressure. So if I have to read it in a very simple terms, I will simply say what is air pressure? Air pressure is the weight that air column exerts. If I read statement number 2, the atmospheric pressure is expressed in units of millibars and pascals. The widely used unit is kilopascals written as HPA. And when we take the reference of this HPA, we need to understand what exactly is the implication of it in the mean sea level factor. So statement number 3. At sea level, the average atmospheric pressure is 1013.25 millibars or 1013.2 HPA. What does that stand for? Kilopascals. So what is air pressure? Air pressure is the weight that the air column exerts on the ground and air pressure is normally expressed as millibars and pascals millibars mb and pascals as kilopascals hpa is 1013.25 millibars or hpa at mean sea level and if i continue to read it further due to the gravity the air at the surface is denser and has higher pressure 
The air pressure is measured with the help of mercury barometer or aneroid barometer. At any elevation, it varies from place to place and its variation is primary cause of air motion. That is wind which moves from high pressure area to low pressure area. Now, how exactly we make sense with the development of air pressure, picking up NCRT content and the content that we need to understand to make sense with this particular block of line. I have understood that air pressure is the weight that air column exert. I have understood that air pressure has to be higher near ground essentially because of gravity. But then that will make air pressure pattern worldwide to be same. But is this the case? No, it is not. So how to interpret it? Let us go to this diagram to understand. This is my sea level. You can call it mean sea level or simply sea level. And I can notice from this very simple diagram that we have got denser concentration of air pressure. The air density or air pressure are higher at sea level because of the taller column of air pushes down. And if I ask you to see this mountainous region and compare, the air pressure and density are lower at higher altitude because shorter column of air pushes down. What does that mean? At mean sea level due to gravity, I will develop high pressure and same when I get on to the higher height. I will again have the effectivity of gravity. but because the air column is shorter, it will give me lesser pushing down effect. So read this line, above each location on the earth is a column of air that stretches to the top of atmosphere. And what is the location will decide what will be the air pressure. I am going back to NCRT, then we will come back to this diagram again. Reading this line again, at any elevation, it, that is air pressure, varies from place to place and its variation is primary cause of air motion. Let us delay this statement. At any elevation, it varies from place to place. Why? Because of the variations in the height of air column. Are you now associating the diagram that we have taken into reference? Above each location earth is a column of air that stretches to the top of the atmosphere. Taller column, denser pressure, shorter column, lesser pressure. Pressure varies. at variable elevation. Is it sufficient information for us to proceed our study with? No, it is not. So what we want to take now, we want to take the variations of the air pressure in terms of horizontal and vertical characteristics one by one. So vertical we want to complete, so let us go to NCRT. If I read vertical variation of air pressure from NCRT, it simply says, in the lower atmosphere, the air pressure decreases rapidly with increasing height. Why the air pressure will decrease rapidly with increasing height? It is because with increase in height, there is decrease in temperature. We are talking about normal lapse rate that I have discussed in one of the earlier videos. So, because we have got temperature, atmospheric temperature and atmospheric pressure having inverse relation, higher the temperature, pressure will be lower. So, normally with increase in height, there will be decrease in temperature. So, if I take this relation between temperature and pressure, then pressure should increase, but we are noticing it is decreasing. So, how to explain it? We are explaining it with the reference of the vertical pressure gradient force is much larger than the horizontal pressure gradient, but it is balanced by nearly equal but opposite gravitational force. 
so i do incorporate this relation to be influenced by gravity that is the reason when i say vertical pattern of air pressure it's a generalized pattern that we only talk about general because with increase in height the temperature decreases thus with increase in height the pressure should increase but pressure is not increasing as there is the decrease in the gravitational pull so nutshell vertical variation of air pressure will be more variable from one location to other so where the focus of study actually remains confined to it is horizontal pattern of air pressure to understand latitudinal or horizontal pattern of pressure the horizontal pattern as is mentioned in our ncrt there is the foremost requirement for us to remind that with increase in the sign of latitude angle of sun rays becomes slanting and that is the reason between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn we are in warmer zone between tropic of cancer arctic circle and antarctic circle we are in moderate temperature zone same is here and at highest latitude we are at coldest zone we call them frigid zone same here so a general logic that i apply with temperature and air pressure will give me what equation it will give me this equation with increase in sign of latitude temperature decreases so air pressure should increase if i am warm i should be which air pressure low if i am cold i should be which air pressure high this is the equation that i take as a relation between temperature and air pressure but is it going to be an absolute thing no so what is the change that we have to understand understand this one cell world model now what is this one cell world model we are believing that earth is not tilted and earth is of uniform composition which is not rotating either because if it is rotating then it will be generating coriolis force i'll be explaining it just in a while so coriolis force is missing there is no spinning of earth so direct this is my geographical equator direct sun rays are falling here i get warmed up slanting sun rays at poles this is my 90 degrees north this is my 90 degrees south and we have got this curvature of planet earth warmer will rise rise will spread horizontally because rising air column will result into cooling when we due to vertical movement experience cooling only due to change in the volume we call it adiabatic right now we are talking about cooling so i am writing as adiabatic cooling so what is happening warmer air column rises here rising results in adiabatic cooling this adiabatic cooling makes it pause at certain height we know that the height of tropopause is at 18 km at equator and then it starts moving horizontally at 90 degrees north and south it tends to subside because it is cold and then it moves towards equator as surface wind if i ask you to understand this one cell global circulation non rotating uniform composition earth it actually is asking us to believe the things like this equator 90 degrees north 90 degrees south 
rising air convection, height of tropopause, subsiding air convection and this is my cell. This is what is being depicted here, one cell. And what is this? Tropopause. Why it is 18 kilometers over equator? Rising warm air. And why it is 8 kilometers over pole? Subsiding colder air. Why rising is not beyond tropopause? Because of the adiabatic cooling. But is this one cell model of global circulation real? No. Number one, because earth is tilted. Number two, it is unequal in its composition, land and water. And number three, it is spinning on its axis. So what becomes real? Real is this. Equator. 30 degrees north, 30 degrees south, 60 degrees north, 60 degrees and 90 degrees north, 90 degrees south. Now what exactly is happening? A rising air convection cools down and spreads, tends to subside at near 30th parallel, subsiding and rising, I am just trying to highlight it. Frontal rise at near 60th parallel. and thermal subsidence at near poles. Which type of circulation develops here? The circulation that develops here is Tricellular meridional circulation. The point that we are trying to make is that in reality we have got three cell model as the rising convection at equator and subsiding convection at poles are the thermally induced rise and subside but we also have got the rising and subsidence which is due to the mechanical factors. Here we have got frontal rise, so in place of one cell model what becomes more real we have got three cell model. What conclusion this three cell model actually gives us? This three cell model gives us the reference of convective movement of air develops pressure difference. Convection can be thermally induced or mechanically induced. Every rising convection will develop low pressure on ground and every subsiding convection will develop high pressure on ground. So rising convection is developing low pressure on ground and rising convection is subjected to adiabatic cooling. So it will not rise beyond a certain level. And it is therefore that it will generate a sort of piling up effect in the tropopause level. So piling up will generate higher pressure, vacuum, lower pressure. Convective movement develops pressure difference. 
how many pressure types we have for planet earth in accordance to three cell model we have seven pressure profile equatorial low and polar highs at 0 degrees at 90 degrees north and south plus we have subtropical highs Thirty degrees north south, and subpolar lows. Sixty degrees north south. What is the nature of this pressure profile? We want to learn it with the support of the diagram as well as NCERT map. See this figure carefully. this is equator and which air pressure i'll be having here it is equatorial low what will be the air pressure at 30 degrees north and south subtropical high pressure at 60 degrees north and south subpolar low pressure and at poles 90 degrees south and north polar highs and if i have to specify them which are the pressure that are developed due to prevailing temperature conditions it is these three pressures that i have just highlighted equatorial low is low because it is warm throughout the year and polar highs are highs because it is cold throughout the year subtropical highs subpolar lows of each hemisphere is the outcome of mechanical generation right so what is the pressure profile for planet earth we have got seven latitudinal or horizontal air pressure pattern question however arises will we be having these pressures in absolute uniform manner worldwide answer is no the reason is season cycle latitudinally season cycle will change the location of these air pressure as in if there is apparent movement of sun towards north then the equatorial low will no longer be confined at 0 degrees it will be shifting with the shift of thermal equator logical thing and it is also that regionally we have got unequal distribution of land and water so i have got the pressure profile as 7 but these pressure profile are dynamic both in terms of its regional and latitudinal characteristics now to understand this i am taking you to ncert the horizontal distribution of pressure is studied by drawing isobars at constant level isobars are line connecting the places having equal pressure in order to eliminate the effect of altitude on pressure it is measured at the station being reduced to sea level so we are only learning sea level pressure we are not learning any variations of height you have to keep that in mind and then we are taking the details of world distribution of sea level air pressure so if i take world level of sea level air pressure january and july is what we have to handle so slightly zooming it here near equator the sea level pressure is low and the area is known as equatorial low we have learned it along 30 degrees north and south we find high pressure called subtropical high we have learned it further pole words along 60 degrees north and south the low pressure bells terms as subpolar low is there and near poles we have got high pressure called polar high so how many pressure profiles we have got latitudinally we have got seven pressure profile equatorial low at near 0 degrees subtropical highs at near 30 degrees north and south subpolar low at near 60 degrees north and south and polar high at near 90 degrees north and south 
and mind it we are taking these pressure at C level. What we want to now learn season and land water distribution. Support of NCRT, NCRT maps are excellent to learn this. So carefully see uh, equator 0 degrees and I have got the placing of ITCZ, I am not enlarging this name right now, at near equatorial belt, this is month of January. Month of January means apparent shift of sun towards south. And that is the reason we are taking the ITCZ mostly confined along and south of equator, geographical equator. Now carefully notice, if it is January, Northern Hemisphere is experiencing which season? It is winters in Northern Hemisphere. During winters, land masses will have high pressure. And if I am noticing these high pressure over India, over United States of America, I am actually talking about subtropical high pressure. But once I take the reference of this pressure profile towards higher latitude, I am noticing low pressure to be dominating. What is this low pressure profile that is dominating? Is confined only in the water bodies. Are you noticing it? That means subpolar low marks its confinement only in Pacific and Atlantic Ocean. Right here, this low is called Icelandic low. And this low is called Aleutian low. Carefully notice, during winters, land will develop which temperature anomaly? Negative. Negative will go with high pressure. That means, ideally speaking, at this latitude, I should have subpolar low. But why in Siberia or for that matter, northern Canada, we do not have that subpolar low because land has cooled down. So, low pressure remains its confinement in Pacific and Atlantic called Aleutian low and Icelandic low. However, on the neighboring land masses, it will be comparative high pressure. So, two things to be noticed. Number one, ITCZ, read it thermal equator right now. I have not talked about wind as of now. Shifts south of equator and low pressure, which low pressure we are talking about? Subpolar low, develop strong cellular characteristics called Aleutian low in Pacific and Icelandic low in Atlantic. Now see this, July, apparent shift of sun towards north. So, thermal equator is north of geographical equator. Subpolar low is more or less well intact. High pressure have vanished from over land and is strongly developed. Notice we should otherwise be, India otherwise should be which pressure here? Subtropical high. But now because it is summers, land will be warmed up and warmed land will be developing which pressure? It will develop low pressure. So what will happen to subtropical high pressure? Subtropical high pressure will remain confined in open Atlantic and open Pacific. In open Atlantic, it is called Azores high and in open Pacific, it is called Hawaiian high. I want you to remind yourself that whenever we talk about pressure, you need to take the understanding of season. I am reading it from NCRT. The pressure oscillate with the apparent movement of sun. In northern hemisphere, in winters, they move southward and summers northward. And what we are adding to it? It is land water distribution. So, do, do take reference of the video on the air temperature. Water will always maintain, land will show variation. So, what is the variation that we have learned? Summers, 
Hawaiian high and Azores high will mark their presence and winters Aleutian low and Icelandic low and where they are applicable to Atlantic and Pacific oceans. There are seven pressure belts. They register seasonal and land water distribution related variations in the pattern. If I now take support of our diagram to understand the things further, we have learned that there are seven pressure and these pressures are developed due to thermal and mechanical causes. The developed pressure difference, the created pressure difference causes wind. That is the reason wind always moves from high pressure to low pressure. Which type of wind this will be? Surface. And which type of wind this will be? Upper air. And when we talk about wind with currents, so what are currents? Currents are vertical movement of air and wind is horizontal movement of air. They generate what is called atmospheric circulation. And what is the nature of the circulation that is what we have to learn. Low pressure, high pressure. So wind will move from high pressure to low pressure. This is also high pressure, subtropical high wind will move from high pressure to low pressure. Similarly, if this is my low pressure area, wind will move from high pressure to low pressure. But is it moving the same way? No, it is not. That means I need to learn something more about wind. I want to pick up NCRT. Forces affecting velocity and direction of wind. What is wind? Wind is horizontal movement of air. The air is set in motion due to differences in the air pressure. The air in motion is called wind. The wind blows from high pressure to low pressure. The wind at the surface experiences friction. In addition, rotation of earth also affects the wind movement. The force exerted by rotation of earth is called Coriolis force. Thus, the horizontal wind near earth's surface responds to the combined effect of three forces, the pressure gradient, the friction and Coriolis. In addition, we can talk about gravitational force that acts towards the surface. So, how many factors or forces that influences the horizontal movement of air? So, first written in our NCRT is pressure gradient force. So, what is pressure gradient force? The difference in air pressure produces a force. The rate of change of pressure with respect to distance is pressure gradient. The pressure gradient is strong where isobars are close to each other and weak when the isobars are apart. So, always remember pressure gradient force equals number one genesis of wind, number two wind velocity higher the pressure gradient force, stronger wind be the wind velocity and wind direction. Wind always flows from high pressure to low pressure. So, pressure gradient force is the force that results into genesis of wind, wind velocity and wind direction. And basically it is the logic with which if my wind is to be named, it is always named after the direction from where it blows. From where it blows. So, you need to be cautious with these factors. How do I apply pressure gradient force? Pressure gradient force is the genesis force of wind, 
pressure gradient forces, the determiner of wind velocity and wind direction. The friction force, it affects the speed of the wind, it is greatest at the surface and influence is generally extending up to the elevation of up to 3 kilometers. On the earth's sea surface, frictional drag is minimal. And what is Coriolis force? The rotation of the earth about its axis affects the direction of wind. This force is called Coriolis force after the French physicist who described it in 1844. It deflects the wind to its right in northern hemisphere and to its left in southern hemisphere. The deflection is more when wind velocity is high. The Coriolis force is directly proportional to the angle of latitude. It is maximum at poles and is absent at equator. Important line now, the Coriolis force acts perpendicular to pressure gradient force. Supposedly, I am drawing a very simple diagram. This is my low pressure area and this is my high pressure area. So, pressure gradient force will take my, pressure gradient force will be making wind move towards low pressure. So, this is pressure gradient force. I am reading it. Coriolis force act perpendicular to pressure gradient force. So, I am in another hemisphere. So, Coriolis force will act perpendicular to Coriolis force, pressure gradient force. And the pressure gradient force is perpendicular to the isobar. The higher the pressure gradient force, more is the velocity of wind and larger is the deflection of the wind. As the result, these two forces operating perpendicular to each other, in low pressure area, wind blows around it. The low pressure gets filled instead of getting intensified. That is the reason the tropical cyclone do not form near equator. Nor the eastern trade, south eastern trade are named after the direction from where they blow. So, both these winds are blowing from subtropical high to equatorial low. Why northeast? Because in northern hemisphere, Coriolis force results in the development of deflection to right and in southern hemisphere, it is left. So, what is ITCZ? Intertropical convergence zone. Subtropical high divergence. So, from subtropical highs, we have got which type of wind developing? These winds are southwest westerlies in northern hemisphere and northwest westerlies in southern hemisphere. And from polar areas, we will have northeast polar winds and southeast polar winds. So, you just need to take the combination of each one of them. How many types of movement of wind that we apply? We apply the movement of wind in combination to three forces. Which are they? Pressure gradient force plus Coriolis force generates three types of planetary winds. Trade winds, westerlies, and polar winds, which develops three cell model, northeastern trade, southeastern trade, rising convection, subsiding, subtropical high pressure, don't miss to see polar front, don't miss to see the variations in the height of tropopause and quickly develop three cell model. High pressure, low pressure, polar cell, feral cell, head lay cell. How many planetary winds we have in northern hemisphere? 3. Northeastern polar winds, southwestern westerlies and northeastern trade. The air at intertropical convergence zones rises because of the convection caused by high insulation and a low pressure is created. 
the wind from the tropics converges at the low pressure zone the converged air rises along the convective cell it reaches the top of troposphere where the altitude is about 14 kilometers and it moves towards pole this causes accumulation of air at about 30 degrees north and south part of accumulated air sinks at ground to form subtropical high another reason of sinking is cooling of air when it reaches 30 degrees north and south down below near the earth surface air flows towards equator as easterlies which easterly we are talking about here northeast and south east trade winds the easterlies from either side at equator forms itcc such circulation from the surface upward and vice versa is called cell such cell in tropics is called head lay cell in the middle latitude the circulation is that sinking cold air that moves from pole and the rising warm airs that blows towards subtropical high at surface these winds are called westerlies which westerlies southwest westerlies and northwest westerlies and the cell is known as feral cell 3 at the polar latitude the cold and dense air subsides near pole and blows towards middle latitude as polar easterlies which is turlies northeast and southeast again this cell is called polar cell these three cell sets the pattern for general circulation of atmosphere the transfer of heat energy from lower latitude to higher latitude and maintains the general circulation try cellular circulation equatorial low north eastern trade south eastern trade from subtropical high rising convection subsiding convection which cell is this headle south west westerlies north west westerlies sub polar low rising subsiding which cell is this this is feral cell and polar easterlies north east polar easterlies southeast again rising and subsiding cell which cell is this polar 3 planetary winds three cells general atmospheric circulation the general circulation also includes zonal flow please take note of meridional flow and zonal flow zonal flow relates to jet streams meridional relates to planetary winds trade winds westerlies and polar winds taking it from our ncert the pressure and wind the velocity and direction of wind are net result of wind generating forces the winds in the upper atmosphere 2 3 kilometers above the surface are free from frictional effect on the surface and are controlled by pressure gradient and coriolis force so upper air wind is influenced by pressure gradient force and coriolis force whereas surface wind 
have got pressure gradient force, Coriolis force and friction force. When isobars are straight and when there is no friction, the pressure gradient force is balanced by Coriolis force and the resultant wind moves parallel to isobar. Carefully see this. This is my low pressure. This is my pressure gradient force. Coriolis force is counterbalancing it. Wind is moving parallel to isobar, northern hemisphere. Drawing it here, carefully understand. Low pressure, high pressure, pressure gradient force, pressure gradient force is stronger, frictional drag is not there, Coriolis force is counterbalancing it, northern hemisphere, wind is moving parallel to the isobar. Otherwise, wind will move perpendicular to the isobar. Such wind is called geostrophic winds. Zonal jet stream. Trade winds. Headless cell. Polar cell. And please note the zonal winds. Subtropical jet, polar jet, subtropical jet, zonal flow and polar zonal flow. They actually tend to develop what we call garland system. encircling entire globe. So how many types of wind we actually take into consideration? There are two types of wind that we take into consideration. Meridional and zonal. Meridional are which type of wind? Meridional winds are examples of gradient wind and zonal are example of geostrophic wind. When we talk about atmospheric motion or when we talk about air movement, are we supposed to take into account only the meridional and the zonal flow? That is what you have to take into consideration strongly. So we divide the flow into three levels macro, meso and micro scale. So macro we have got global and synoptic scale. This is where we take the account of long waves in westerlies, weather map features with high and low pressure. So basically this global scale we are talking about zonal flow and this synoptic we are talking about the planetary winds because they do get influenced by the difference in the land and water. And then when we start with our meso scale, we do take into account the land, sea, breeze and etc. And don't miss to see the time factor here. What is macro scale view, the zonal and the planetary? Days to a week or more. And what are meso and micro scale? They are getting smaller in their time factor also. So micro sm small eddies or turbulence minutes to hours, thunderstorms, tornadoes, water spout, dust devils. We call all of them as local winds. So take the definition, meso scale and shorter time local winds. Synoptic scale and global scale, macro scale is zonal and planetary winds. And it is basically with zonal and planetary winds that we have got tropical cyclones related. Seasonal wind, the pattern of wind circulation modified in different season due to shifting region of maximum heating, pressure and wind belt. The most prominent is the monsoons and I have dedicated one video on it. And the local winds, differences in heating and cooling of earth's surface and cycles would develop daily or annually can create local or regional winds. So how many types of winds will be there? Planetary. Which scale we are talking about them? Seasonal. 
local circulation caused by <coughs> pressure season land water distribution sea breeze condition day time land will develop low pressure water will be comparatively high pressure daily sea to land day time land will become high pressure neighboring water will be comparatively low pressure offshore land breeze night differential cooling during day mountain wall will get warmed up faster developing low pressure sun rays will warm it up faster whereas valley floor will be high pressure so which type of breeze will be experiencing valley breeze mind it valley breeze is also called anabatic wind however during night the conditions will reverse mountain wall will cool down faster compared to the valley floor and what will be experiencing mountain breeze which is also called catabatic wind it basically again goes daily sequence of local wind it will be with micro scale as we have taken the table and it is also with differential heating and cooling mountain wall will get cooled up faster because it is exposed and it will get warmed up faster because it is exposed so that is how we take the reference of it and also to include sandy surface during day time gets immensely heated up this heating up develops this circulatory motion as you can notice it and then there is the development of this tilting generating this circulatory motion up dust devils are typical to tropical deserts and it actually gives us the look of this on this type of it looks like a tornado of course it is not a tornado and what is the logic here sand gets readily heated which type of winds these are these makes examples of local micro scale winds land and sea breezes the land and sea absorbs and transfers heat differentially during day land heats up faster and becomes warmer land is warm sea is comparatively colder so this is a low pressure this is high pressure this is the wind sea breeze in night the reversal conditions takes place land loses faster so now night land becomes high pressure and sea is low pressure so land breeze so easier expression comes in mountain valley mountainous region during day time slope gets heated up and air moves up slope resulting into gap of the air and these winds are known as the valley breeze so valley breeze is during valley and wall so wall develops low pressure valley is high pressure which wind will be experiencing valley breeze and what is the another name for it anabatic anabatic is during which time day time and during night the slope gets colder dense air descends to the valley and is mountain breeze. so mountain breezes 
this is high pressure, this is comparatively low pressure and this is the night time. What is the breeze, mountain breeze and what is the another name that you should be aware of? Get out. Pressure caused by convection. Pressure causes advection. And then do add types of advection. This is what we have attempted to study in this particular chapter. I have not completed it. Air masses, fronts, and other mechanism we have not talked about, as I said in the beginning itself. Happy learning to all of you. All the very best.